Hello everybody. Greetings from sunny and slightly snowy Colchester. Um, so, here we are. Bit of a weird time for everyone. We've never known anything like this to happen before. Um, we're all fine here. Me, my wife and my daughter. The, uh, the only strange thing that's happening to me is my hair. This is a toned down version of where it's going at the moment. Um, and I'm quite interested to see where it will end up when lockdown ends. Um, I'm kind of, I think I'm going to look like Cousin It, but slightly thinner. Um, so yeah, we're, we're all fine here. We've got food, we're observing the rules. I've, uh, I've checked with my neighbours and everybody's fine there. I have a couple of friends who have tested positive for the virus um, and I'm happy to say that they're they're all on the mend now um, but much love to them and and to everyone else we're all in this together and it is a bit of an odd time um so anyway in amongst all of this um i have a book out this thursday 2nd of april it's uh it's monday 30th of march today i don't know time has begun to lose meaning um so i thought i'd read you a bit Song of the Sycamore, um, like I say, is out this Thursday. And um, if you would bear with me for a few minutes, I shall read you chapter one. I was sitting comfortably. The city of Old Castle rose from the wasteland like an abscess swelling on the festering skin of a diseased world. Across its neighbourhoods and districts, the siren called, lifting and falling with an ominous wail that sent citizens scurrying for their homes. Hiding like monsters in burrows, they prayed that this latest threat from the wastes would pass the city by, while fearing that this time judgment had come to demand penance for their crimes. The people of Old Castle were rank with guilt. The city was populated by murderers, and it was my home. Through the chill of evening shadows I made my way to the outskirts of Old Castle. No breeze disturbed the air, no sound accompanied the siren's wail. Light from a setting red sun did little to warm a tense ambience. Beyond the last line of buildings I began crossing a stretch of open ground heading towards the city wall. But it wasn't me walking, not really, not anymore. I could see through my eyes, hear through my ears, smell the stench of the city, but I had no control over my direction. My footsteps weren't made of my own volition. I neared the city wall, a sturdy construct, thick and high, unbreakable, but at that moment it seemed merely a thin veil constructed for the illusion of safety. The huge turrets rising atop it housed the mighty ether cannons which protected the citizens from the horrors of the waste. But not from me. He's close. These words gurgled from an oily mass slivering over cracked stony ground ahead of me. A ghoul, wheezing wet breaths, hissing with anger. This thing had been a woman in life, a simple soul, but in death an oozing puddle fueled by injustice, out for revenge. Caring nothing for the danger approaching Old Castle, the ghoul sang her song, a song of obsession and need, and I couldn't deny her plea for vengeance. Whirring. Rattling machinery. Up on the wall, the turrets were turning, sweeping the aim of their long, fat cannons left and right. A low, familiar drone came next, baritone beneath the undulating siren, rumbling through the empty streets behind me. From the centre of Old Castle, a great beam of energy shot towards the cloudless pink sky like a water spout. I'm really sorry, but my hearing aids come out, and <laughs> it's really annoying me. Uh, let's continue. Uh, from the centre of Old Castle, a great beam of energy shot towards the cloudless pink sky like a water spout. The city had activated its ether shield. High above the buildings, the energy gathered into a monumental ball of clear, wavering magic before dispersing, smearing, spreading across the length and breadth of Old Castle, forming a barrier between the city and the sky. Above me, the edge of the shield curved downwards, creating an umbrella that descended liquidly to the ground. 
to the ruined ground outside the wall. In a matter of moments, this hive of guilt-ridden souls was secured within a dome of ether power like a city in a snow globe. Sunlight refracted. The siren changed its pitch. The breeze dropped and the air became stifled. The bitter taste of ether dried the inside of my mouth. But it wasn't really my mouth now. Closer, the ghoul hissed. Cannons tracked the movements of whatever monstrosity was coming from the wastes as I followed the ghoul along the line of the wall. With no choice in the matter, I was led to a set of stone stairs rising to a pot-bellied watchpost nestled between two turrets. The ghoul slivered up the stairs and I climbed after her like the dutiful puppet I had become. No sign of movement came from beyond the watchpost's darkened doorway, but I knew a man hid there, a murderer who had nowhere left to run. He had taken sanctuary in the watchpost in a vain attempt to hide from death. His subconscious understood what was coming for him and why. The dead deserved vengeance. Reeking of sewage. The ghoul hissed in anticipation, gurgled with longing. Like a snake, her darkness oozed up around the doorway to form an oily frame. I stared into the gloom beyond. Your sins have returned to you. My mouth using my voice, but it wasn't me speaking. Won't you come out and atone with dignity? No reply. The man in the watch post was by no means the first murderer I had tracked that day, and he wouldn't be the last. I had been leaving a trail of blood behind me for two days now, and there was an endless river's worth waiting to be spilled yet. Whatever will remained to me, I tried to force it into my legs to make myself turn around and walk away, but I no longer had the strength or presence to make a difference to my actions. I stepped through the ghoul's stench, entered the watch post, and the man attacked immediately. He came out of the gloom, big and strong, a blur of motion in the dim light shining through the viewing slip in the back wall. With one arm, he pulled me into a tight embrace, spitting a curse into my ear as his free hand thrust a knife into my side. The blade couldn't penetrate my ribs and sliced over bone before its tip ripped out of the skin beneath my chest. I was too far gone to feel the damage inflicted upon my body and pushed the man away with force enough to send him sprawling. Kill him, the ghoul hissed from the doorway. The murderer sat on the floor, staring up at me. He was no magician. He couldn't see the ghoul of his victims. His expression became stunned when I pulled the knife from my body and showed no distress at the hot blood soaking my shirt and trousers. Panic filled the man's eyes when I used the blade to point at him. The dead call me Sycamore. I am their shepherd. With another curse, he jumped to his feet, fists clenched and ready to fight. I stepped close to him, dodged the clumsy punch and drove the knife into the side of his neck, down to the hilt. Such a simple and fluid act. I wished I could have turned away and covered my ears as the man dropped to his knees, choking, clawing at the knife's handle with fingers slicked in arterial blood. Desperate, struggling to breathe, his eyes pleaded with me. He looked to be approaching twenty, the prime of life, but not yet old enough to have seen the horrors of war. When he toppled, face down and dead, the ghoul gave a peaceful sigh and slivered across the floor. The oily darkness mingled with the pool of blood spreading around the corpse of, his of her murderer. As though in a show of gratitude, a single tendril reached out to touch my boot before the ghoul faded and disappeared. Finding peace through vengeance, she journeyed on to the other side. The city siren continued to wail. I continued to drown inside myself. <gasps> what happens next? Well, it's a bit grisly, a bit bleak. But if you'd like to find out, The Song of the Sycamore is out this Thursday, 2nd of April, 2020. Um, or it did come out if somebody finds this message in a time capsule sometime in the future. You know, when I've done a Bill and Ted and my works are the foundation for all life on Earth. So, listen, I hope you enjoyed that um, and I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. 
Um, we're all in this together, so continue following the rules, um, and I'm sure that we'll get out get out of this on the other side. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there who are on their own, having to spend isolation in isolation. Um, and look, I'm on Twitter. I'm at Edward Cox Ten. You can find me, and if you ever feel the need to just reach out to say hi and let let yourself know there's life on the other side, please feel free to DM me. I'm usually around plenty of time on my hands. Um, and uh, all, of the, all the rest of the while, I'm going to be keeping myself busy um, finishing my new book, which uh, the deadline is for a couple of weeks. And uh, other than that, I'm going to be trying to keep me and the rest of the family safe um, and sane. And hey, we're all in this together. Bye-bye.